Your word is our wisdom. Thank you for your word. We bless you. Holy Spirit, you are the master teacher. Nobody teaches like you. When you speak, we listen. When you instruct us, we want to obey. You are our source of every good thing. So tonight, as we sit around your word, may I not say one word that will grieve you. May I not say one word that will hurt you. You are so precious to us. You are our master mentor and our master teacher. Bring everything to my mind that you need your people to hear today. And be glorified in this house. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand of prayer just one more time. Hallelujah. And before you receive it, please look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you know what? I really, really love you. And then you let me see it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How will they know that we are his disciples? Not by the way we preach, not by how we prophesy, not by how gifted we are in our singing, but by the love we have one for another. May God help us that we will be an expression of love to our neighbors. May you be a good experience to people when they come in your midst. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's my greatest joy to be here tonight, Apostle. Vincent, thank you from the bottom of my heart for this great opportunity and your precious wife. Man, when someone that's great invites you to come and speak, you kind of have to put all your words together and everything together because you realize, if you don't know this, let me say to you, you're in the presence of greatness. Greatness is not the absence of a flaw. Greatness is not the absence of weakness. Your ability to see greatness when you enter its presence will determine how far you'll go in this kingdom. There are people with great faith, people with great endurance, great ability. You must pray that God will open your eyes to see greatness. But sometimes God will bring you before greatness, but your pride will close your eyes to see what God has brought you. You will never have a financial problem. You have a wisdom problem. If we change your wisdom, we change your money world. You don't have a marriage problem. You have a wisdom problem. If we change your wisdom, we change your tomorrow. If you go into tomorrow with the same wisdom of today, you don't really have a tomorrow. You only have a longer today. Only if your wisdom changes, then tomorrow changes. And so we are in pursuit of the wisdom of God. Amen? Amen. So such a joy, man of God. You have one of the greatest teachers in the nation of South Africa. I don't say that lightly. You are privileged to have one of the greatest teachers in the nation of South Africa in the form of the man of God. Amen. And tonight, by God's grace, I would love to for the time that I have, speak to you on why it's important to honor your man of God. Why it's important to honor your man of God. And I'm just, I'm going to speak to you from my heart. Because honor is the lifting power of the kingdom. If you know no honor, you cannot be lifted. And so when God gets ready to lift you, he really wants to teach you honor. And we will work through that tonight. Please go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 17. 1 Timothy chapter 5. I'm reading from the King James Version. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and in doctrine. For the scripture says, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that tread out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. And for time's sake, I will just make a reference to scriptures. Uh, it's important to often sit with a pen. 
Because a short pencil is better than a long memory. Amen. However, this little mic here is for recording purposes. And so it is being recorded as I speak. And I do that because I learned by my father that sometimes you will preach. You've not prepared to say something, but the Holy Spirit will say something through you. And when you listen again, you think, did I really say that? My father, Dr. Murdoch, sits with six recorders. And the reason why he has six in case the one battery is flat and the other battery should be running because he says the Holy Spirit is always talking. We are just not recording when he's talking. And so we forget when he has spoken. And so he records everything. And so I've learned that from him. In any environment, not just what he's saying, but what other people are saying. Because the Holy Spirit always has answers. And he can speak through the simplest person. If you have leprosy, he can use a servant girl to tell you where to go to get your healing. The Holy Spirit is extreme. He's the best speaker. Nobody talks like him. Amen. And so I want to just lay a little bit of a foundation to help you understand what you are dealing with and why honor sometimes is very hard for you. Because honor is extremely hard for people. And uh, there's a reason why. So the Bible says in Proverbs 4 verse 7 that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. The Bible says, exalt her, that's wisdom, and she will promote you. She will bring you to honor when you embrace her. Honor is a lifting that comes for you. She will bring you to honor when you embrace wisdom. She will give to your head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory will she deliver unto you. Wisdom. Now, so when Solomon wrote, he was writing about the wisdom of God. We'll do that for you. Well, when you read in James chapter 3 and from verse 15, you realize that there is not only godly wisdom. Because James says there's a wisdom that comes from above. It's a peaceable wisdom. But then there is also an earthly wisdom. And then he says there is a devilish wisdom. And that's just the challenge. So Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 10 will tell you when wisdom has entered your heart and knowledge has now become pleasant to your soul. So the challenge is this. When we say wisdom has entered my heart, the question is what kind of wisdom has entered your heart? Is it godly wisdom? Is it earthly wisdom? Or is it demonic wisdom that has entered your heart? And you can be a born again believer and walk with demonic wisdom. And so it's extremely important that we are taught what is godly wisdom? Where does it come from? How does God work? And how does godly wisdom look? I'll just say this to you because there's much to say around this, but I'll say this to you that demonic wisdom always rebels against authority. Whenever you see, whenever you see rebellion against authority, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in the kingdom of God, whether it's in a school, whether it's in a... The devil was the first one to rebel against God. And so the Bible speaks in Isaiah about Lucifer and it says, you were beautiful in all your ways until your wisdom became corrupted. And so demonic wisdom is corrupted wisdom that wants to make it sound like it's right. But it corrupts you to fight authority. This is how we did it in the garden. You see the thing about the devil. The devil won't necessarily show you to him to worship him. The only thing he has to do is show you away from God. And then he has succeeded. So, so the devil don't hate you. He hates God. And so he cannot get to God. But by hurting you, he hurts the heart of God. And so he comes because he knows how much God loves you. And so now what happens is in the garden, he comes to Eve. He said, did God really say that when you eat of it, 
Didn't, you know what? God don't want you to be a God like him. He knows when your eyes open, you'll be a God just like him. Wow. He didn't show Eve to him. He showed Eve to herself. You will become a God just like him. And so he deceived her to paint a picture with a corrupted wisdom. And we are still paying the price today because of that. Do you understand? So the devil is very subtle. So now what happens is uh, when Noah came off the ark and he built the altar for the Lord. And then the Bible says, this is in Genesis 8. And then the Bible says, and God realized, God was so pleased with the offering. But God realized that evil is in the hearts of men. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's just what men know. Because he tried to get evil out of the earth by bringing the flood. But the Bible says, go read Genesis 8, it's about verse 20, 21. He just realized that evil is just in the heart of men. And in Jeremiah chapter 17, he writes and he says, the wisdom of man, uh, sorry, the, uh, the heart of man is deceitful above all things. And it is desperately wicked. Now you have to know what you are challenged with. This is what you are challenged with. Your heart is so deceitful, it even deceives you. Your heart is so wicked, he's worse than a gangster. A gangster at least you'll see is coming to rob you, not your heart. That's why your neighbor can stand next to you in church worshiping, and the next day they're stabbing you in the back. Because the heart is deceitful above all things, and it is desperately wicked. It's the reason why we need the mercy of God. Every day. Every day you must cry to God, show me mercy, that this heart will not deceive me. Now, the devil, why he couldn't submit to God anymore, was pride. You see, and so deceit comes in when you become prideful. And sometimes you don't even know that you are prideful. And so people say, I am humble. I'm like a worm in the dust. They use that scripture. Yeah. But that's not humility. This is, this is the first test of humility. Humility is seen in how you treat other people. That's how you see humility. They say they should plats as a menorah blade, but they wait on the scoffers with the other men. They have seen these full throats. Do you understand? So the first sign when I see how you treat people, it shows me whether you are humble or not. The first sign I believe that you are called for the ministry is your love for people. It's not how anointed you are, how great you are, because God loves people. And so the devil tries to deceive you. Human wisdom will only agree with authority and stand with authority when there's agreement. If I don't agree with you, then I don't stand with you. They will not submit. As long as I like what you're saying. You see, I take care to come and you have this in mind. I want to tell you, you're in error. This, when your pastor is teaching you, and I said, I eat not the flesh, but I speak the bean. It's just the bean that you must cook. And he is from the era. And that I'm going to tell you why. You see, because the wisdom of God. They come to Jesus in Matthew chapter 13. His disciples. They ask him, Why do you speak in parables? He says, Because it's for you. It's given for you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom, but they can't. So I must tell them in stories. So the kingdom is in mysteries. Hmm? What is a mystery? A mystery is something that's unknown. If we all go out here now and we come back and there's a body laying dead here. Nobody saw what happened. It's a mystery. Now they must call the detectives in. To try and solve the mystery. If you are not schooled in solving mysteries. You are going to mess up the whole thing. You see. 
Now not everyone is schooled in solving mysteries. The fact that the three scriptures can mean it, can a mystery for the kingdom solving. Amen. And I'm not speaking to be hard. I'm I'm speaking because I want to really help people. Because there's a social media that wants to teach you things that is totally opposite of what the kingdom of God will teach you. The biggest fight on social media, saying it on Facebook, it can live for me hours. I say, I'm a so boy, man. You wow. I honor my parents. Wow. Saying it, I honor my children. I honor my wife. I honor my husband. Oh, that's so beautiful. Saying it, I honor my pastor. And all hell breaks loose. You're worshiping these men. Because the devil knows there's a powerful wisdom there. That is the lifting power for you. Let me say this to you. Nowhere in the Bible does it say God wants double honor. Nowhere in the Bible does God say your parents are worthy of double honor. Nowhere in the Bible does he say your husband is worthy of double honor. He doesn't even say your wife is worthy of double honor. He says those who teach you in the word and in doctrine, they are worthy of double honor. Now let me say this to you. Sometimes in our own wisdom and our own experience of life, we want to decide how God must think. Yeah. Do you understand? So Moses comes to the burning bush. Yeah. God says to Moses, take off your shoes because the ground you're standing on is holy. Yeah. In the eyes of Moses, that ground looked like all the other ground, exactly the same, nothing different. What does it mean to be holy? It means to be set apart. Yeah. This piece of ground I have set apart from every other piece of ground. So in the mind of Moses, the ground was all the same. But in the mind of God, this ground was set apart. So you look at men of God. Because in your mind, he looks like every other person. But in the mind of God, he's been set apart and is worthy of double honor. That's why in 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 9, Elisha had passed the house of the Sinamite woman often. But she says in verse 9 to her husband, I now perceive, I've seen him many times, but I now perceive that this is a holy man of God. And when she perceived him, she built a house, a, a room, to keep him close. My father always sends, ends his messages to me, Dr. Mike Murder, stay close. And then he says, stay close. Because there's a wisdom in keeping a man of God close. Close. So she, she's, when she perceived him, she built a, a room to keep him close. And then the man of God says, what does this woman need? He asks his servant. He says, man, I've not seen any child here. Her miracle never came when she only saw him. Her miracle came when she could perceive him. That's why Jesus says, having eyes you see, but you can't perceive. Because the kingdom is in a mystery. It's not what you see with your eyes. It's how you perceive things. That's why the Bible says, no, no man after the flesh. That's the problem. We know too many people in this, that we should know in the spirit after the flesh. That's why I'm saying you are sitting in the presence of greatness because I have perceived who you have in your midst. It's not good enough to see. But human wisdom... Just want to see. Demonic wisdom want to just see. And respond out of what they see. But not godly wisdom. So now Paul writes in 1 Corinthians. Go with me to 1 Corinthians. I'm teaching you on why you must honor a man of God. 
I asked the Lord, I asked the Lord, why must I honor my parents so much? Because you, as you all know, I think most of you know, this is my subject that I study. Yeah. And I started studying the subject because I was with Dr. Murdoch one day in his office and he said these words to me. He said, son, honor will take you further than your education. Yeah. And then he said, honor will take you further than your genius. They don't they slim. They can honor will take you further than the Ivaji Dang Slim. And then he said this to me, honor will take you further than your faith. And I heard that I thought, my Lord, I need to study the subject of honor. And as I studied it, I saw it is the missing diamond in the kingdom. Revelation 4 11. We're now going to go to 1 Corinthians. Revelation 4. 11 says for thou art worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they were created wherever there's a demonstration of glory honor and power God finds pleasure and so in the churches I grew up in there was a great love and a desire for the glory there was a great love and desire for the power. But there was no desire for honor. I grew up in the assemblies of God. And I stood one day because I preached in the national conference. And I said to them, I love all that you've done for me. But I regret the fact that you didn't teach me honor. Because honor is what loves you. This is what honor is. So wisdom is the ability to recognize difference. When you are wise, you can see the difference in people. Proverbs chapter 2 will teach you that. The difference in women, the difference in men. Because everyone is not the same. Yeah. One woman said to me, I honor everyone the same. I said, wow. How does your husband feel about that? Do you sleep with a neighbor too? Because he gets the same honor that your husband gets. Because you honor everyone the same. Do you cook breakfast in the morning for your neighbor and everyone in the street? Because they get the same honor as your husband. Listen to me. If you've honored everyone the same, you've honored no one. So wisdom is the ability to recognize difference. Honor is the willingness to reward people for their difference. So when I, when, when I see your difference, I want to reward you for your difference. That's my honor to you. So I can't treat this man of God the same like I treat you. Because I, I see his difference. I value his difference. I'm not saying you don't, have a, you don't have a value, but it's not the same value. And one of the greatest differences in people, one of the greatest differences in people is what they value. And you can tell what they value by where they spend their time and their money. That's how you see the difference in people. Oh, I love God. I love the kingdom. I, you won't have time for the things of God. I love God. But they bleed in the new offerings. Is this too hard for you? I love you. That's why I'm telling you this. The difference in people is what they value. I value the kingdom so much that I want to sow into it. My time, my energy, my money, all that I have. Because I want to advance the kingdom. But when you become your own God, then look at the investment you put into you and look at the investment you put into the kingdom of God. Dr. Murdoch said to us, if what stands in your garage is more expensive than your library, then you put more value on the natural things than on your mind and on your wisdom. One man said, struggling financially. I said, show me your library. Let me see your books. But you have no books on money. You should be broke. Because anyone who have what you don't have, they know something you don't know. 
Anyone who have what you don't have, they know something you don't know. And you want to humble yourself and learn from those people. One day I sat in South Korea with a man about 15 years ago. Uh, he's worth 5 billion US dollars is his net value. So I'm sitting with him and I said, what must I do to get to where you are? He says to me, you need to build capacity in you. You need to build spiritual capacity and you need to build financial capacity. I thought, wow, that impacted me. Because one man can run a company and then he has no time for his wife or his children because he's so busy running this one company. Another man runs 120 companies around the world and he still plays golf and he takes his family on vacations. What's the difference? Capacity. Capacity. I said that to say this to you. The man who said that to me was a Buddhist. He wasn't a born again believer. Anyone who have what you don't have, they know something you don't know. The arrogance of born again believers has cost us dearly. Mm. To think we can't learn from Muslims. To think we can't learn from the Jews. To think we can't learn from other people because they don't believe what we believe. But they know something you don't know. A Jewish accountant said this. The Jews, let me say this to you, are 0.02% of the world population. The Jews. They own almost 40% of the world. They are 0.02%. But they own almost 40% of the world. They're on the top 500 list of companies in the world. And so the, the one day a pastor asked this accountant, who's a Jewish man, tell me, who does better, the Jews or the Christians? He said, obviously the Jews. He said, why do you think that is? And the guy took the Bible out, the accountant. He said, because the Jews believe the front part where God said we must take the land. The Christians believe the back that says don't love money. Wow. Jy is broke. Daar wil jy nog streem met mense wat geld het. Do you understand? Was ek nou by oos kijk, dat ek oos een mense gevra, did your mother drop you in your head when you were three months old and you never recovered? Maar ek sal het nie hier vraag nie. Listen to Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 6. We're talking about what wisdom has entered your heart. Because that determines how you will show honor. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that comes to naught. The wisdom of this world, again, it comes to naught. Verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. In what? So the kingdom is in a mystery and the wisdom of God is in a mystery. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So there's a wisdom, Paul says, that we speak that is in a mystery. Now listen what Paul says in chapter 3 and verse 5. He says, who then is Paul? And who is Apollos, but ministers by who you believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. None of the word was, I'm going to let assignment that was speak, but we are ministers by who you believe that must preach. And look what he says then in chapter 4, verse 1. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and the stewards of the mysteries of God. Kom, ek maak het makkelijk vir jou. Your pastor is the detective in the kingdom of God. Hy solve the mysteries. And whenever he solves a mystery for you, he relieves you from misery. Wherever you have no revelation of a mystery, 
you are in misery. Everywhere where there's loss in your life, it means you don't have the wisdom of God there. I wrote a book called Seven Things I Learned from Dr. Mike Murdoch. The first thing I learned from Dr. Murdoch is that God does not decide the quality of your life, your decisions do. Mm-hmm. I wish I could tell you God did. From where I came, people taught me. Vertrouw nie die Heere. Ek vang a klom, nonsens, verkeerde besluite, doen ek, en ek vertrouw nie die Heere. Tell you something about God in my discoveries. God is a God of sequence. What you do first determines what God does next. God wants to save people, but He don't save them until they reach. Save me. Yeah. Amen? God, is, what you do first determines what God does next. He's a God of sequence. And so you want God to bless you, but you don't honor. You want God to lift you, but you don't honor. This world is run by laws. Physical laws and spiritual laws. If you work the law, it works for you. If you work against the law, it works against you. There's a law of sequence in the earth. That's why the Bible says, seek first the kingdom. It's a law of sequence. First matters to God. You can be a tither, but if you bring your tithe forth, you're out of sequence. God wants it first. Now you wonder why you're not blessed because you're out of sequence. Nobody remembers who came forth. Mm. First matters to God. That's, that's why Elijah said to the widow, bring to me first. He was teaching her a law of the kingdom. And if you bring to me first, as long as the famine is here, you never go hungry. That woman had more than just a morsel of bread. You know what she had? She had the ability to believe a man of God when he spoke. Something most people don't have. Because the law of first is a mystery. Imagine the newspapers heard Elijah say, Bring to me first your last meal. So in headlines, Profeet eet weder wees a laaste stikkie brood. That's the wisdom of man. That comes to naught. And so when your pastor teaches you things and is busy telling you things, if you receive what he is saying, you will start to break free from the things that's holding you bound. They are gifts given by God for you. Just like the widow. Do you think it was in Elijah's need that came before God? That's why he sent him to Zarephath? No. It was the need of the widow. She was crying, God, my son and I, we're going to die. God says, I'll send you help. I'll send you a man. Because that is how God sends you help. But our, our pride makes us not see the help that God sends us. Everything I know, the Holy Spirit taught me. Wow. Explain to me how he taught you one plus one. Did he write it with a finger? How did he teach? How did he teach you to eat with a fork? How? You see, our pride won't acknowledge who taught us. Jesus comes to a man in John chapter 5. The man is crippled for 38 years. The Bible says whoever was first in the water when the angel stirred it was made whole. Jesus says to him, will you be made whole? Do you know what he says to Jesus? I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. It's not that I can't reach the water. It is, I don't have the speed to get to the water. So when God wants to accelerate your life, He brings you a man to give you speed. Your ability to receive the help from that man will eradicate 20 years of pain in a moment. 
They are gifts. The way you receive this gift doesn't send a message to the gift. It sends a message to the giver of the gift. This was a gift that I had. And I said, this is my gift to you. Take it. And you just like throw it there one side. It's okay, just throw it one side. Now you just keep looking at me while I'm teaching. She don't send a message to the cloth. She sends a message to me, the giver of the gift, that what you gave me, I put no value to it. She also tells me, you don't know what I need. I know what I need. So what you sent me, I don't appreciate. That's what you do when you don't know how to appreciate the gift. You send God a message. The devil don't want you to know this. The devil wants you to fight your pastor. The devil wants you to corrupt what he's building. Honor is what loves you. Listen, what the Bible says in... Uh, does the scriptures come up there? Oh, that's great. Thank you. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 6, the Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. What comes from the mouth of God? Knowledge and understanding. So there's a wisdom that God gives. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Jeremiah 3 verse 15. Jeremiah 3 15. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Out of whose mouth comes knowledge and understanding? So God puts his wisdom in the mouth of the man of God he sent you. And that wisdom is in a mystery. And if you don't have spiritual eyes that can perceive you will always fight this wisdom because it makes no sense to this earth and it makes no sense to the demonic world whenever i'm with my father sometimes he teaches such deep things and i sit there and i think that don't make sense man how does it but i keep telling myself remember you the stupid one because as long as he's ahead i'm the stupid one I'm supposed to learn. He knows something I don't know. <clears throat> he just said the other day, he was just talking by the way, and he was talking about the importance of how to buy property and what you must do is giving advice. And he said, in one week I bought seven houses and this was seven houses you bought in one week cash? You know something I don't know. Yes, sir. I'm going to close. They were trained to do that. <laughs> Every preacher wants to hear that. Whenever your pastor's preaching, he says, I'm going to close. Oh, no. Just feel like I said something worthwhile. So I brought my cheerleaders with me. So, you know, re go to the next verse. I will give you knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass. When that knowledge and understanding enters you. It shall come to pass. When you will be multiplied and increased in the land. The wisdom I bring you will bring you multiplication and increase. Listen. In those days says the Lord. They shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to mind. Neither shall they remember it. Neither shall they visit it. Do you know what the ark represented? The ark represented protection when they went into war. The ark represented provision. Remember when it was at the house of Obed-Edom and David heard how he was blessed because the ark was there. God says, when I send you a pastor who will teach you in knowledge and understanding, you will no longer miss the ark because the results of victory will be the same. Yeah. I'm going to say this to you, and this is too strong for people who are con.
The most important person in your world is the one who builds your faith. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Faith and the one who's teaching you faith is keeping you in victory. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The one who's teaching you faith is the one keeping you pleasing God. That's why the fight is so against the men of God. You know, the Bible says in Luke 16, speaks about, I was teaching now for five weeks on the spirit of mammon. But the Bible speaks about, in Luke 16, Jesus tells a story about four levels he gives of financial existence. Mm. Beggar's level, the working level, and then he speaks about the mammon, the money level. Mammon is so close to money that some translations even call it money. But then he speaks about the true riches level. The true riches level is the anointing that breaks yokes. Come on. Solomon had this revelation. Solomon said, wisdom is better than gold and silver. We don't believe that. Because we on the third level, that's very important for us, money. But he says there's a deeper level. It's a spiritual level that can accelerate you quicker than any money can. So now, when, 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 your, when, your, when your spiritual father comes and gives you spiritual wisdom, he's giving you more than money. He's giving you more than money. He's giving you the ability to have speed, to accelerate. Now, Jesus said, the uncommon mammon, if you cannot be trusted with uncommon mammon, is money who will trust you with the true riches yeah. right listen to me it's up to you while you are being fed with the true riches to bring the uncommon mammon and put it on an altar mm. the more you do that the more you will see that God can lift you even in your finances yes I have discovered blessing my man of God is of the greatest secrets that I could have discovered. Saul said, we, I cannot find my donkeys. And then the servant who was with him said, there's a prophet who can prophesy it. But then they said, we cannot go to the prophet without the offering. I often wonder without us knowing how God works with protocol, because God's a God of protocol. Yes. So we don't sing in the beginning of a service. We don't sing because we're waiting for Sister Mary to come. We sing because God says we must enter his presence with singing. It's a protocol. I want to encourage you before you start to pray in the morning, sing him a song. That's why many times you wake up with a song. Because God wants his presence to be entered with singing before a petition. Without us knowing, we take up an offering before a man of God comes. Because your ability to put an offering down seriously, spiritually, depends how the revelations will flow from it. Last year, end of the year, I'm done. I'm going to give you this testimony. I sold my S500 Mercedes Benz. I gave it to my father. Actually sold the car, took all the money and sent it to him. Three months later, I get three cars and a four-bedroom house. That they blessed me with. This has been my life. Do you know why? My father taught me a mystery. And I believed it. Come on. There are many people. You see. There is one test. In this kingdom. You must pass. It's the money test. You must pass it. Listen. Before you are going to go anywhere great. You must pass. If God can trust you to go anywhere. You must pass the money test. That's why the rich young ruler, he comes to Jesus. Jesus says to him, he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, keep all the commandments. Honor your mother and your father. Don't commit adultery. He says, I've done all that since my youth. Do you know what Jesus says? There's one more test. He don't say, give your possessions away. 
He says, sell your possessions so that it can come in the form of money. And then we see if you have defeated mammon. And he said, it is too hard for me. I cannot do that. Because many of you can keep many of the commandments, but you can't pass the money test. You have to, because mammon is a spirit that talks to you. That's why the Bible says money answers all things. All that means is money talks to you. Yeah. As a voice, yeah. You see, and that voice is louder in the ears of many Christians than the voice of the Holy Spirit. Louder. Give your last hundred rand. What? How can I more text you to fat? What for the bread for the kindness? Do you think you don't know those things? Jesus said, your father loves you so much if he cares for the birds of the air. But there's a principle he wants you to know. One of the greatest ways of demonstrating honor to your parents and to any authority, to your pastor, is a financial seed. Ask me. I've broken levels. My greatest seed, I love sowing. And every month I sow seeds in different men of God. I have consistently sown. My, fa my, 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 my favorite seed is a thousand rand. My daddy says he broke the back of poverty with a thousand dollar seed. Oh. I've sown that seed several times. My father says when he sowed a seed of 8,500 8, US dollars, it, he, the Lord gave him a lifetime blessing. Oh. Now you listen to that and you think, I'm going to have the same faith. You're, you're giving me a mystery. Yeah. Mm. That's not just a testimony. Mm. Yeah. And so I did the same. Do you know the ideas that God gave me? The things that God brings me. Sometimes I can't tell all of it. Because I can see the jealousy on the face of the people. And this one thing I have realized. People want what you have, but they won't do what you do. The man of God is worthy of double honor. 